And we're back on the roof. So we got no cool call. This train unit uh, serves our, it's a gym, it's the yoga room. It's not working. Uh, I don't know if there's a call right now, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna see what's going on with it. So uh, here we go. Alrighty, so. operational see if we're getting a call for cooling so if we look here on these train units I'm just gonna make sure we have 24 volts so I'm going R to C 27 volts all right Y to C okay so we have a call and to G we have a call so we don't have um, we have a call for cooling, fan is running, but compressor is not running, contactor is open. Uh, so, on first glance, I'm using my, um, usually I like to do a visual inspection. I can see that there is oil all over everything. Uh, so it shows up. Can you see that? Yeah. So there's oil all over the place. So, I think it dumped the charge and it tripped the pressure switch. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. This is the low pressure switch. Uh, it should be closed and it's open. So I think we dumped the charge. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a gauge and just see if there's any charge left at all. Um, I'm thinking it's completely empty, but we'll see. Well, just as I thought, it's got zero PSI, so it completely dumped the charge. So we need to find the leak and fix it. Now, considering that there's oil all over this discharge line, I'm thinking that it's probably somewhere on the discharge. Um, Maybe somewhere over here. It's usually where it happens. So we're gonna go ahead and pressurize this with nitrogen, locate the leak, and then go from there. All right, so I'm back. It's about two days later. Um, we got our approvals to go ahead and do a nitrogen thing. Apparently, we couldn't get a hold of the person who authorizes this stuff, so I couldn't do the nitrogen test till now. So anyway, I got the ports off. We're gonna go ahead and um, pull out the Schrader cores because why not? makes things a little bit faster all right well I got it up to 200 ish a little over and it's definitely losing pressure I found it she's right there yeah. so because it's on the discharge line I'm tempted to just braise it up but I think I'm gonna actually cut this off and put a new piece on just so I know it's like good because this will probably just crack again so anyway, uh, looks like we found our leak. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and dump the nitrogen and then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and braise that up and then um, we'll go from there. Now, you guys are probably gonna blow me up in the, the comments. We have this here. This line is not three eighths. I think it's, I don't think it's quarter. I think it's like, Maybe five sixteenths. I don't know. Anyway, I tried to order uh, one of these, and uh, they didn't have one. So I'm gonna put one of these in. All right. So we're gonna bend this piece of half inch. No, it looks like it's about ninety degrees. Cool. And what we'll do is we'll just replace this piece here. We'll just replace that piece there. That way we don't have to worry about that crack reopening again. And so I'm going to cut it here and then sweat that off. Alright, so I got this cut off. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to deburr this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually blow nitrogen through it as I'm deburring it and shoot out any birds that fall in there. I could braise that crack up, but more than likely it's going to happen again. Now, 
I can't get this to go in all the way because there's a little bit of solder. One of the trick you can do is you can use your swedger and you can kind of open it up just a smidge extra. And what that'll do is allow you to at least stick it in there without having to heat it up so you can at least get it in place. Just don't overdo it. Okay, there you go. So I will flow nitrogen through here. Alright, so we're going to brace here, we're going to brace here, there, and there. Uh, so that's four points. I'm going to be running nitrogen through the discharge line. Alrighty, we got her all brazed in. It's ugly as heck, but it is what it is. It's not, I don't think it's leaking. So we're going to let her hold. She's at 250. So we'll let her hold for a little while and see what happens. All right, so when you're pressurizing with nitrogen, it's always good to let it chill for a minute. So that's where we stopped at. So we're gonna go ahead and start our timer. Uh, so yeah, we go, now this is the Testo 550S. Go to mo, uh, menu, enter, we go to pressure test, enter. Now it's gonna ask for one of the uh, clamps. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. And it's gonna read the ambient temperature. Sees it, so we hit OK. All right, and we're going to put this on the temperature on where we have our gauge hooked up, so it's reading off the high side. So we want to get the temperature of the high side, and that way, if there's any temperature variances, it'll take that into account. So now we got it all set. We're going to hit start, and there we go. Timer's there. Current pressure, start pressure, current pressure, delta T. We've already gained 0.1, so that's a good sign. So we're gonna go to lunch, and then we'll be back and see if it held. So you need to be wary about your hoses. So I've replaced the gaskets on this, and I still have a leak. See that? So when I had it under pressure, I would notice I was dropping pressure. So I've closed this. So the only thing that's pressurized is my hose, and I'm, I have this closed, but it's leaking, see? So be wary when you're doing these pressure tests, when you're using hoses, make sure they're not leaking. And I've replaced both gaskets, so I know it's not the gasket, so I have a leak somewhere, probably somewhere in here. Now I've shot it with some leak detector, but uh, I got no bubbles. So it must be a, I don't know where the leak is, maybe it's in the hose itself, but. So I'm doing the same test on my blue hose and it appears to be holding. So it looks like it's just the red hose that's bad. I guess it's time for me to get a new set of hoses. I think I'm going to just put the, uh, the probes on here and test the pressure that way. I just don't trust these hoses. Ah, annoying, because now i got to go down the ladder to the truck, back up the ladder, and then do this again. So, yeah, good times. All right, we're back. It looks like she held pressure. So it's been a little over an hour. Uh, yeah, an hour and 12 minutes. So, not bad. All righty, we're pulling a vacuum. Okay, cool. So far, so good. So, while that's doing that, we're gonna go ahead and take the stuff we don't need down. Alrighty, so we're at uh, 191 microns. So let's see what it actually is at. I'm closing these off. Yeah, not bad. So, go ahead and turn this off. Now we're going to go ahead and charge it. It takes 7.7 .7 pounds. we got our R22 ready to roll. All right, so normally we're going into the liquid line, but this is the discharge, so it needs to be gas. So I got this flipped over. Um, very important we don't have dead air in the system. There we go. We just bled all the air out because even though I have this from here to here, it's air. All right, cool. We'll go ahead and zero that out. And we need 7.7 .7 pounds. All right, so I got the unit running. So we got uh, three pounds in there already. So this is an additional uh, one and a quarter pound right now. So I'm shooting for another additional four, uh, four and three quarter, I think, or 4.7 pounds. So we're already almost at two pounds additional. So I was able to get three pounds out of that first tank. So now I'm doing the rest, which is 4.7. So we're at 1.6. 
So uh, yeah, and, and it stopped at three pounds. Um, I had to charge the rest of it with the unit running. As you can see, I have my hoses running through this hole here. That way I can have the panel closed. All right, so we're at 4.685, so close enough. So we're gonna let her stabilize and see what happens. So our pressures are totally off right now. So we'll give it a minute to stabilize. All righty, she's cooling. So here's what our pressures are like. So keep in mind the high side is actually the discharge. So our subcooling is totally wrong. Um, and those pressures are a little high. Uh, but our suction side, we got, uh, well, we did have seven degrees of superheat, but now it's at three. So I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, you know what? I just opened that. Uh, so yeah. So my superheat was at seven, but I opened the door because I put a thermometer in there. Discharge temperature is at 48. And this is why our superheat's off, because I just opened this. Throw that in there. Turns about 75. So I would say she's cooling. Suction pressure looks good to me. Uh, we'll let her stabilize a little bit more as I'm putting stuff away. But uh, yeah, we got a factory charge in there, should be fine. Uh, so my target superheat for this system was eight degrees and I was at seven. I don't know what it's at now because I've been opening the doors. But anyway, if you ever come across one of these things, oh, and by the way, that's what these holes are here for. So you can put your hoses in there and close the panel so you can actually get an accurate reading because if I left that door open it'd be sucking air through there instead of through the coil so anyway hopefully this helps you out if you're in this situation uh, so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe comment and what a horrible technician I am hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and if you like my tools make sure you pick up a set of them on my uh, Amazon store thanks for watching